Hello and welcome back to the NAS panel Projector Channel here YouTube. Welcome to the very first episode or video at least of the new year. Um, and so of course, uh, what better way to kick it off is of course with a collection update. Which of course in this update I'll be uh, showing what I had gotten for uh, Christmas and what I had bought either somewhat a uh, few of the, uh, the weeks at least. Uh, leading up to Christmas and of course uh, what I purchased after Christmas so and of course uh, what I did purchase I had to wait on at least for at least a week to come in so and yesterday I got it or the Saturday at least but because you're probably watching this on Monday uh, that and of course that last package did finally come in and I don't want to go, go into detail how difficult it was to kind of get in that package so, with that, without further ado, uh, but be first, before I do get into to the uh, the albums, which of course most of what I'm going to show is actually going to be records, but let me get, get into what's playing in the background, which of course is the band that is of course uh, being played in my new uh, video intro, which is going to be the main video intro for all of the videos from now on. That of course is this band which I just found on Bandcamp and they just released this uh, just last year. This is their debut basically. It's a band out of Seattle. They're called uh, Nasty uh, Nasty Bits. Uh, of course I did um, artwork and everything for it uh, by myself actually. Uh, they didn't really have any artwork for it so I just made a, just what I can find of their either uh, band stuff on Facebook and everything. But they're called Nasty Bits and they're out of Seattle and this is the only thing they released. It's an 8 track uh, demo basically. Killer stuff! This is some killer um, heavy metal. And of course the track that I'm using uh, for my intro is titled Well Whiskey. I don't know um, if I'm gonna get a copyright claim because of I can't find any of their stuff on YouTube so this is definitely, I hope uh, that I tend to, uh, let's say, turn some people on. Great stuff. Uh, just again, released in November. If I knew, if, if I had uh, stumbled upon this uh, by that time, I probably would have mentioned it in my top 10 best albums of 2018. But for now, uh, better, it's, um, uh, better now than later or anything. <laughs> but, yeah, good stuff. All right. Um, finally, let's go. Let's get into the CDs first. Um, this, of course, first thing here is a was a VCLT uh, package from Final Transmission that I had gotten uh, a few weeks ago. This, is, of course, uh, when he, uh, one of my videos that I did, he of course uh, asked me if I was interested in this uh, particular album, especially this copy, and for sure, um, I, I I couldn't pass it up. This, of course, is uh, Night of the Blade from Tokyo Blade. This, of course, is the High Voltage 1997 uh, reissue with, of course, bonus tracks and stuff. This, of course, is not the night before, which, of course, uh, is the one that featured Alan Marsh's vocals uh, for the album. This, of course, is the original uh, already released version uh, with uh, the guy that replaced Alan Marsh, uh, uh, which, of course, is Vic Wright. Uh, glad to have this. I ended up getting a copy of the first album just uh, oh, pretty much a year last year. Uh, so I was happy to finally get this one. It's not a very easy album to come by. I At one point I actually once came across an original uh, vinyl pressing of this album. But at the time I didn't pick it up. But still, uh, great album. Enough said. If you've never checked out this album or even their first uh, self-titled debut, all great stuff. Definitely good. Good that. Great to have it. Um, so now to the two other CDs that I uh, end up uh, getting for Christmas. Now, uh, let me get this out of the way. This was, of course, was a part of my top ten best albums of last year. That, of course, is the uh, recent album from Uriah Heep. Just looking at time because uh, I don't want this to be too long. Of course, uh, living the dream. Um, Good album. I don't need to say anything more. What I said in that uh, top 10 video is what I needed to say. Great album, though I have yet to watch the DVD yet, which of course is making the dream. 
which of course also features two music videos for Grace by Heaven and Take My Soul Away. Or Take Away My Soul, excuse me. Still, uh, great album. Great album from Uriah Heap. And of course, a box set. That of course is Tags of Pantang, The MCA Years, which is a five di or technically, yeah, five disc box set, which of course features um, the album Wildcat with bonus tracks, Spellbound with bonus tracks, Crazy Nights with bonus tracks, and The Cage with bonus tracks, and a uh, disc five being titled At the BBC, which of course features uh, In Concert 1981, Friday Rock Show 1980, and The Reading Festival 1982. At a later time, I'll do a box set showcase so I can talk more about this, but definitely a, definitely a great box set for sure from um, Tags of Panting, of course, being released through um, Caroline uh, Records, who of course did the, which I have yet to also do a box set showcase on is, uh, this as well, which I got also really early uh, 2006. 17, I want to say, but still great. So, there you go. The MCA years from Tiger of Pantane. Now, it's finally on to the meat, as of course is the vinyl records that I ended up uh, getting. Uh, before Christmas, after I had purchased the number of the Beast Town from Walmart, I went back there and picked up the uh, 2003 uh, Columbia Records reissue, of course, of. Back in Black by ACDC. Uh, of course, I'm not I'm not going to show every uh, the inserts and everything because I don't want this to be too long. It's pretty much just the uh, write up and everything that you will find in the booklet, but and also uh, behind a photo collage. And it's pretty much got, got the most uh, uh, for an example. Uh, I guess I will is this and. Uh, pretty much, which is going to be on most of these 2003 uh, uh, reissues anyways as that label. So it's at this point, the most, uh, definitely the ACDC's uh, generic uh, custom-made label. So that, uh, that that's as far as I'll go. I don't know uh, if I put that for side A or side B whenever I do pull this out for listening. Either way, uh... I don't really see anything about this album. I don't need to. It's ACC Black, Back in Black, um, debut for Brian Johnson. That's all that needs to be said. So, and of course I wanted a standalone copy because the only copy I have this album is a part of my Bonfire uh, CD box set, which I have in the closet over there. Uh, still, glad to have a copy, a standalone copy at least of Back in Black, and it's a decent sounding pressing anyways. All right, next up, of course, is uh, another reissue that I end up getting at Walmart as well. I'm trying to pretty much as much, get a hold of as much of their hard rock metal stuff as much as possible. That, of course, is Ride the Lightning from Metallica. Of course, is the 2016 Blackened Records reissue. Um, I have the, the Blackened Records uh, CD reissue, but I definitely wanted the... Uh, the uh, vinyl reissue, so there's your insert, and of course, ah, uh, shit. And of course, your custom label for it, which of course is in blue, which of course makes it dark to read. What a great, great uh, idea. <laughs> Anyways, glad to have it on record. Sounds great on record, I have to say. It sounds definitely great on record. Um... Uh, uh, and of course, it's a good sounding pressing for sure. I was on the fence on whether or not I wanted this reissue or track down original Mega Force pressing, but good luck. So I'm fine with this 2016 Black and Records reissue. Um, again, uh, between the albums I really want to find from Attack, I already have a copy of Master Puppets. Of course, is the 2008. Warner Brothers, uh, was it audio file uh, pressing, whatever that was, which is a okay pressing, and it's fine. It's not my favorite album, but it's fine. To me, Ride the Lightning and Kill 'em All are, and I'm looking out for uh, the reissue, of course, for Kill 'em All, anyways. So, glad to have this. And it's the only metallic I really want on vinyl, other than maybe getting EPs and such. So, 
glad to have a copy on record for Ride the Lightning. Since, of course, I show Back in Black, it's, of course, a um, no-brainer that I would end up picking this one as well from Walmart. That's, of course, just a 2003 Columbia Records reissue for Highway to Hell. I almost wanted it. I, for the longest time, I wanted it, the uh, Alberts Records pressing at least of this sound with the, uh, the uh, was it the guitar uh, bridge with all of them on fire and everything, but there is just no way I, I, I'm, I'm going to pay the, the price that people want to ask for for a Albert Records uh, pressing of uh, How to Hell. So I'm fine with this reissue. Uh, again, it's going to be the similar kind of layout anyways, collage, write up, and typical sort of custom label for um, the album. Um, enough said, it's Highway to Hell. There's nothing more I can say about this. It's a classic album from ACDC, so I'm glad to have a copy of Highway to Hell on record. I have the 2003 CD reissue of it, and I also have an original CD pressing as well of it, which is beat the shit. <laughs> so, yeah, it's one of the few other ACC albums that I have uh, multiple copies of. <laughs> At least two on CD and one on record. For Fly on the Wall, I got about a record copy, CD copy, and a cassette copy. So, <laughs> so yeah, the, uh, there's... The ones that I got before Christmas is time now the ones I bought after Christmas. So, and these are all original pressings. So, I've seen many people talk about this band quite a bit, and uh, the first time though I heard about it was actually through one of my friends of picking up a particular, which I will also show from them. As, of course, is Axe out of Gainesville, Florida. It's, of course, is their third album offering. Uh, released through, of course, uh, Acto Records, which, of course, I guess I can show the uh, the label here, which is, uh, in a way, pretty standard. If I can get this out of here, because I don't want this too long, which, there, oops. Uh, typical uh, Albert Records inner sleeve, or Atlantic, excuse me, but it's on, uh, which, of course, will be the same for the next record, too. So there you go, your typical Atco Records uh, sleeve. Of course, it's a U.S. pressing. Uh, uh, definitely not in the uh, the most uh, awesome shape, but it's in at least good good enough shape. Trying to find a copy that at least is in good shape, and for uh, the decent pricing, versus was free shipping anyways uh, for the record off of eBay. But trying to find a copy that isn't beat up and isn't a gold stamp promo uh, is kind of not so very easy. But I was able to come across a good copy of it uh, that isn't a gold stamp promo. Uh, again, plays fine. As far as the album is concerned, I was never completely familiar with the acts, even though I knew what kind of style they play, which is almost sort of a mix of between AOR, hard rock, and kind of borderline metal even though it's not metal at all, but it kind of has that sort of same feel. Um, I didn't know if I was going to really like this or not, and of course I uh, at the same time bought this one and the record after this one, which I will show, which of course, I guess I'll say, Nemesis. Um, I didn't expect to like it as much as I did. Again, one of the few AOR uh, band, or at least of the genre that I actually like. Um, and I've been kind of dipping my feet a little bit. I don't like the sticky sweet stuff like Survivor, Loverboy, uh, 80s era Journey, and of course, uh, I think I might have said Survivor. I don't know. Anyways, I don't care for those bands. But the ones that weren't completely as big, that were in the sort of genre, I seen to like a bit more because there's at least something there for me that at least it offers. Of course, no pun intended, because the amp's called Offering, but definitely good songs like Video Inspiration, uh, their cover of I Got the Fire by Montrose, Burn the City Down, hold on, even the song Silent Soldiers I really like. Uh, rock and Roll and Party in the Streets, I swear, I think fucking Bon Jovi might have ripped that off for his song uh, uh, Runaway. 
I swear, if you listen to sound and listen to, to the first Bon Jovi album, it's almost strikingly similar at times, but this one's a lot more edgier, more harder rock, and at times, of course, the only really downside to some of the sound is the song Jennifer, which is an okay song, but it's definitely pure AOR schlock. Uh, but, again, it's actually a good album for, for what it is. So there's that. There's Offering. And, of course, now, Nemesis, which is this right here. Um, don't need... Uh, I guess I can show the... This one at least came with its actual inner sleeve, which is with logo and, of course, back cover with the lyrics. And it's on this typical same ACO uh, label, that record label at least, for the inner layer, the, the uh, what is it they call it, the spy, the, uh, the record itself, that label, it's the typical one that's on that one, so I don't need to show it. Um, good a little better condition than that one, and it plays fine for what it is, and definitely, again, found a copy that isn't a gold stamp promo, and is definitely in decent uh, condition, and it was, of course, free shipping. Um, as far as the album is concerned, it's a little bit, slightly has a much more harder sounding production than, of course, the offering, which I should also um, uh, give out a fact that it's produced, both downs are produced by Alan Nally, who is, of course, is best known for producing the later stuff from uh, Blackfoot, starting with Strikes, Tom Catton, and Marauder, and uh, Siogo, and those albums. Uh, but, and so he, he produced these, and there, this one shows a little bit more of its Southern Rock uh, influences than, let's say, Offering, especially on the first track, Heat in the Street, which is a great track. This easily could have mu uh, been much more of a follow-up, I guess, to Marauder. It's very similar to the Seago album, but both Offering and this one are way better than that Seago album, especially Vertical Smiles. If these were, were, were the albums released by Blackfoot, I really would have uh, dug them way more. But though those two albums from uh, Blackfoot just suck. These two are good. I actually kind of dig this. So maybe... Not nearly as much as off frame because again, song that heat in the street all through the night and she she's had the power and their cover of Edgar Winters keep playing that rock and roll are actually fine. And some of the other uh, sort of AOR -y kind of songs are pretty good um, for the most part. It of course doesn't end on as much of a good note as they, they uh, offering did. But of course, Silent Soldiers I really think was a great uh, way to end it here. Masquerade's interesting. But it's not on a really hard rock and uh, uh, note. Still, uh, it's a solid album. I, it's really tough though between which one I like more. I think I like them just as equally, if not this one's just a bit tad more at times due to its production value. But still, uh, they're solid albums for what they are. Uh, and, the, and Nemesis was Axe's last album before they came back in the 90s. I have yet to find uh, good copies, at least, of the first two albums. So I'll be on a lookout for those two. So, great to have them. Finally, the last one, which is the one that just came in on Saturday. Um, been looking out for a copy of this sound for a long time. That, of course, is the debut from Great White. Uh, their very first full-length album, which is released back in 1984 on the EMI America label. Before, after this one, they'd all get picked up they get, uh, by Capitol Records. And of course, a significant change in sound. Uh, still, um, as far as obtaining this album, this is not an easy album to get a hold of, which I can definitely can show. It's of course is the U.S. pressing, which for the U.S. pressing, it was a black and white cover, which of course being embossed, which if you can see right there, and finding copies of this that isn't beat the shit because of the, the way that they had the, the kind of stuff that they had to use to make it embossed, it's so prone to wear that it makes it all dusty. And when it came in, it was pretty dusty, but when I used like the Goo Gone to get rid of the uh, sticker residue. For some reason, it was that kind of cleaning a bit of the the bit of the the beatness, at least a bit of the record. So it looks a little bit better now. But 
There it is. For Because I was originally going to get a European pressing, which would have used this as the front cover with a more colorful sort of logo. Uh, but for some reason, I had a problem uh, with eBay was giving me a problem with uh, purchasing that record for some reason. Because it was coming out of the UK. But I opted for, for a US pressing. Which of course uh, comes with. the This copy comes with its insert. And of course here is the label. Which of course is for at least this one. The standard EMI America label. I guess. I don't really buy much from, from that label. I didn't buy a whole lot of from that, but I was definitely was after a copy at least of the first Great White. Now the first Great White album that, at, like, at least the Great White album that got me into this band was Psycho City, which came out uh, in 1992. But when I went and dig deeper, I ended up checking out this first sound a long time ago, and uh, it was the song Stick It. Great track, definitely one of the best. Uh, actually, though, to be quite honest, there really isn't a bad song on this album, especially when you got other great tracks like Out of the Night, um, Bad Boys, uh, On Your Knees, Street Killer, um, uh, just looking at time again, No Better Than Hell, um, Nightmares, and of course, uh, Dead End. All good songs. Of course, they do a cover of The Who's Substitute, which is a fine cover, actually. Definitely a little bit, uh, kind of almost fits with half the album here. Even though that'd be their norm is to do covers, because on the next sound they would cover, um, The Angels Face Today. Uh, definitely, this is their most heavy metal record, for sure. They never could ever... If I had this copy, I, I did a video of albums that bands can never recapture, this would have been in there. This is an album they could never ever recapture after because of when they, uh, this sound apparently had flopped for the band. And so, after that, when EMI dropped them, they went with Capital and changed up their sound to a more of a melodic, bluesy, hard rock kind of sound. But Shot in the Dark was, almost had traces of AOR at times. Okay. But that's probably the weakest sound, at least, of some of the albums. Because, again, this album, uh, Once Bitten, and then, of course, Twice Shy, and then, of course, Hooked, and then Psycho City are actually fine albums. I actually dig those. But when listening to this and then going into Psycho City, which are the only two great white albums that I own at this point, different sound. This sound is straight up ahead, heavy metal, produced by Michael Wagner, who of course is best known producing at this time, except uh, Balls to the Wall, uh, Ravens All for One, and uh, uh, Dawkins uh, Breaking the Chains. And again, even Don Dawkins has a bit of writing credits on this album. This is definitely by far one of my favorite albums from Great White, and it's a great record. There, it's To me, um, just a little bit more raw at times. It's definitely there under the blade. There, shout the devil, and there, uh, I guess you could say tooth and nail, in some degree. Just a great album. I'm glad to finally have a copy. It definitely plays fine and everything. So great to have that. So there it is. There's all the stuff that I've gotten for, for the past couple of days and everything leading up to either Christmas and so on. This is my update and my first video of the new year. Hope you all enjoy. If you have heard most of these albums or have or have not, definitely let me know in the comment section below. So until then, this is Henry Thrasher Sam out. And I'll see you all. I'm glad to be here to enjoy 2019 with all of you. Take care, everyone.